Welcome guys, I'm Gyo here, hope you're having a great day and this is the first video in a series about RxJS and we start with the question, what is RxJS? I thought about this question a lot and there's not really easy answer to it. If I give you some vague answer like it's JavaScript library or it's kind of a lodash, it will not make a lot of sense to you and that's why I've decided to create a series about this. Because in order to really understand what this library is about and how it can be useful, we have to dive deeper into the technical details, the uh, different examples, different operators, how they work together. Then you know we can understand what this library is and why it can be very useful. In this video we're not going to write some code or go into very technical details. As I've said, we will have some general overview of RxJS and uh, we will see some hypothetical problems and talk about how we can solve them in different ways. Now there are some misconceptions about this library that I've personally encountered uh, in my career and I want to talk about them first. So what RxJS is not? It's, it's not Angular. You know, people think that, uh, especially if they've never used RxJS before and started using Angular, people think that it is it can only be used with Angular because a lot of APIs that Angular provides use RxJS and uh, Observables interface. Well, that's not true. It's a standalone library and it doesn't depend on Angular or you know any other framework or library for that matter. You can use it with React. You can use it in Node.js. The second one is tied to first one because Angular uses TypeScript and a lot of RxJ is there uh, in Angular is using TypeScript as well and people think that it is a TypeScript library but it's not you can use plain JavaScript and that's uh, what exactly are we going to do in this series we're not going to use Angular or TypeScript or anything else we'll just use RxJS and we'll uh, write the code with plain simple JavaScript without any frameworks or tools so then you can take this and use in your own environment and if you look at the name it is called rxjs not rxts so it's not typescript library another thing that comes up when uh, talking and discussing rxjs to my colleagues and you know uh, developers in general is that uh, this comes up you know it's, it's difficult to learn it's not really RxJS has some couple of core ideas behind it, some common operators that you're going to be used most of the time. And uh, to really learn them is, is not hard. It's, it's really easy and simplistic. Now, what is difficult, though, is to properly use this library to gain benefits and value out of this. Because it's very easy to misuse this library. It requires different type of thinking and to get into that type of thinking you have to practice, you have to put in the effort and you have to try different examples, you have to try RxJS with different problems and eventually you'll get this feeling for that type of thinking, you know, and the thinking in terms of observables and how they interact with each other. And this will really help you to have some systematic, consistent way of thinking about the complex problems. That's, that's, that's what is difficult. Not that it has just some couple of functions and operators. There, there's nothing difficult about them. And it's not a silver bullet. What I mean by that? Even if you're going to learn this and use RxJS, you're still going to make some mistakes. You'll have some bugs. You, you're not going to write some perfect code because you have used RxJS. It still requires some time and skill and effort to really get the value out of this. This is this is a kind of intro that I wanted to make before we talk about more about RxJS and what it is capable of. So as this is out of the way, I want to present you some uh, hypothetical problems. And as we go through the problems, I want you to stop and uh, think about the problems and how would you solve these problems. And also I want you to observe your thought process because the most important thing about this RxJS is that we have to think differently about different problems. This is very important to understand your current habits and how you tackle the problems right now so we can have some um, a comparison between what RxJS requires and what you're doing right now. So let's uh, jump into the first one and talk about it. 
let's say we have this hypothetical website here of games these are games the list of games here and we have a search input now as user types into this search box here we want to make this uh, real-time search so we have to make request to our api and then we will get the necessary games that match the given query string and then we will have to display them here in this area now because there is not a click button or something we, we it has to be real time as user is typing user is expecting to get the results as the typing happens now here's the trick though we don't want to make every request on every keystroke you know what we want to do is let the user type in the string and after some time maybe two or three seconds later we want to make the request that way we're not making too many requests because you know user can type in really quickly the query string stop and think about this how would you implement this how would you solve this problem i'm not saying it's difficult but it's something that uh, comes up in a real applications it, it, it might not be games but there might be some table and you might have some similar scenario now one way is to implement this yourself and set up the timers and cancel the previous ones after the three sec seconds or two seconds pass and uh, call then your logic to fetch the data. You can create your own function to your own gener generic function to pass in your functions and make them behave that way. So if you call them very quickly, only the last one will be executed. Uh, you can use, I think Lodash has um, this uh, function it's called throttle if, if i'm not mistaken you can use that one you know there are many different ways but it's not super trivial you know it, it requires some thought and skill to implement this with rxjs you don't have to think about any of that you can just use a single operator it's called debounce time there are other operators that can be used in this scenario but this is a very simple one you can just pass in the time and that's it it will just work and you don't have to write about some extra library you don't have to worry about writing your function to achieve that and so on you can just represent this search string as observable and that's it you have this feature now let's make this a little bit more complex we have uh, added two things here we have added game category and uh, we have a calendar that indicates the release date. Uh, let's say we want to search by that as well. The, this is becoming a trickier because there are a couple of things here. First of all, we have to load categories from our backend. So we have to get this list. And once we get the list, we have to set first item in the list, whatever that is, as the value for this select box. We also shouldn't make any requests until this list is resolved and until the category is selected we also have to keep in mind that the search functionality that we talked before uh, needs to be the same so we don't want to make requests on every character that the user is going to type we also have to consider this date here so there are, you know, already a lot of events to coordinate in a standard way. You have to listen to this search thing, right? We also have to make sure that we load this. And once the, the, this data is loaded, we set this uh, first category here. And then we also have to listen to its changes. So many events there. Also, we have to look at this. And uh, when user changes the value or selects some date, we have to listen to this event as well. On all of these events, we have to look at the other values, take them and uh, coordinate and orchestrate all this flow. What makes things even more difficult is that if we make this uh, search panel persistent, meaning if user just closes the browser and opens up again and we want to display whatever was previously here, now we have to also wait if something was... Uh, previously typed and uh, it adds more complexity it's certainly manageable but it's getting difficult because there are lots of events to coordinate and lots of conditions you know we don't have to make requests until we resolve this value or until we load the previously entered filter values here it's difficult with rxjs this can be very easy we can represent those things as observables 
and we can then combine them and uh, once we get the combined result uh, we can use combine latest it's there we can make request display this here we can represent the list of selected items as observables and we can set the items here and we can also subscribe to it so what we will do with ArcGIS is take these events or uh, pieces of data and represent them as observables and then chain them together which is very easy once you get used to this library now in a real app there can be you know other tons of filters here and it will make things more and more complex as more events will be presented to us and we have to orchestrate all of that together let's look at another example this is a registration form and uh, there are a couple of requirements as the user is typing the email we have to make it real-time check and the same constraint applies as we had for a search we have to you know wait until user is finished with the typing of email and then make it make it a request to our server to check if it is taken or not if it is taken we display this message email is already taken also we have to you know now look at the register button here if email is taken we have to disable this we have to make all of these changes real time now if you look at this there are not a lot of events but there are different pieces of ui that depend on different types of data and this data is retrieved real time and here again uh, we can represent this email as observable as it is changing we can make another observable that is called email is taken so we have this flag as observable then depending on that we can just disable this and update the ui if we don't use that then we have to again use some our custom function to make the requests uh, when necessary when user types finishes typing the email we have to listen to it then we have to you know manually change the dom or update some variable that is required for this and for register button and so on another example here let's say we have some group chat and uh, there are a couple of things we have to consider so we have to load the initial messages we have to listen for new incoming messages uh, we also have to display indicator when someone is typing and uh, when we send the new message we have to add this here but when we get it back from the back end we have to make sure that our message that was added isn't shown again so we don't have this bug here as you see there are a lot of events are here going on loading the initial messages then opening some socket connection websocket connection and uh, waiting for the messages and combining them and sending our message another event then uh, taking our message and merging it with already existing list and it can get very difficult if we add more events well, let's check this example as well so we have the country stand and uh, city selector all of this data is coming from the API we have to load the countries and then whatever the first country is we have to select this then depending on a country selection we have to load the cities in the given country and if the country has the states then we have to load the states select the first state and if the state is applicable then we have to disable all the other cities that are not even in a given state it can seem seem very simple but there are a lot of events going on you have to wait for the countries to load and select the first one then you have to listen to country selection then you have to make request or if data is not available to see if the country has the state and if it, if so then you have to load the states make the first state selected and based on the state selection either by programmatically and you set the first one or when user selects one from the list then you have to alter the city uh, options and make the ones disabled that are not in a given state and this can get even tricky if we had more things and events and more dynamic parts of the form now with rxjs we can represent all of the things as observables and then combine them with common operators and subscribe to these observables and make the changes in the ui because there are lots of ui parts that depend different uh, types of data uh, as you've seen throughout this uh, hypothetical examples uh, there the complexity uh, is increasing when we have different events 
when the number of events increases and then we have to coordinate uh, these events together to achieve desired result. And as you've already guessed, reading such a code and handling this and maintaining it is, is really difficult because uh, we have to think about this. Okay, this event happens, then this can happen or that event can happen. If this event hasn't happened ye yet, then I shouldn't do this or shouldn't do that. And there are many conditions and all these things are intertwined. That's why it makes so difficult. And with RxJS, the good thing is that we think in terms of observables, and we'll talk about observables into details in the next video. And when we think about the observables, we assume the change, you know, we assume multiple values over time or no values. And then and then we think in, in, in terms of the, these observables, we kind of remove this uh, thinking about the events uh, completely because we think about the observables. And then we think how we can combine them, how we can chain them together and then achieve the desired result. Once you master this, once you learn these uh, techniques about the RxJS and how it can be useful, uh, then, then you, know, you can have a very systematic way about thinking such problems and solving them. And in this series, we will go into the details, see the observables, uh, operators, we'll create our own observable, how we can compare them to functions, and then operators, how they work, why they are very important, and how they can be combined together. And it, it's really interesting, you know, and uh, I have personally, from my experience, I've gained a lot of benefits from this library. And yeah, it's, uh, it will really make your life easier. So that's it uh, for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Click the like button, subscribe and share it with your friends.